All right then, this is a little mini review of the RS Pro IIT 1500 from RS Components. Uh, I don't believe RS Components actually have any manufacturing or design facility within house. I think they have these instruments made for them and then rebadged. I believe that this particular instrument is actually from APA Technology, who I know nothing about. Um, but from what I've looked at with this instrument, it does seem to be quite nice, high quality. So the instrument itself, it does come boxed in an RS Pro cardboard box. There is no case supplied with the instrument. This is all that you get with it that you see, so that is missing. Um, you do get a magnetic hanging strap that goes into the back of the instrument. You get a couple of probes, a couple of crop clips that have quite nice uh, dual width on them, a couple of silicon test leads and you get a remote control probe and the instrument itself, uh, stand him up, so the instrument itself you can get remote control operation with those both, both the insulation function and the ohms function um, when you go the ohms function itself, uh, the voltage function is automatic between AC uh, and DC volts and the ohms function isn't, you actually have to press the test button to get an ohms reading uh, along with the insulation as well you have to press the test button so they're both uh, controlled functions so crop clip wise you've got quite a good um, dual width on this, this is an M12 stud which goes around easy, it's the 19mm nut which again it goes around quite easy if I try and hold it up you can see there is quite a bit of space around that so that would be good for getting on motor frames for the earth connection and I like that really is quite a nice crocodile clip much better than some of the other instruments that I've come with probe wise probes are GS30 8 compliant, got the insulation down, 4mm tip there, um, these are SK4s, it does go in 2.5s, doesn't no it won't go into 2.5 and then the original, uh, so they're the Bider Muller versions of these, actual original clip-ons, 4s it goes in 2.5, 2.5 you probably get in and shove it in, it does make contact but they are a little bit on the fat side so if you do a lot of terminal work you can find yourself uh, a little bit restrictive with these but the standard 4mm so you can change them for something else the control remote control probe um, this does have a GS38 cap as well but this is removable on this one um, and you get down to a 4mm connector on there so with the cap on no chance of getting in 2.5s or 4s um, that there is an SAK10 I believe yeah that's SAK10 10 millimeter terminal you can't get in on that um, this is a 35 which you can get in easy enough and this is a stand this is a, a Wilex MCV which again that goes in there no problem with the GS38 cap removed now we can get into a 4mm, uh, it did go into the 2.5 then. Minor well, equivalents, a little bit tighter on there, it does go in. And it does go in on that, just uh, to push a little bit to get in there. Um, so, yeah, without the, the GS38 cap on, you, you're pretty good, you can get into most stuff with the GS38 cap. Uh, it doesn't work so well. So you need to be a little bit wary of that if you do want to use this. There are other control probes out there that will get into this kind of terminals. Uh, the connector at the end there is usually unique to different manufacturers so you find this won't fit into another instrument that has the control probe function. Um, but you need that specific manufacturer's probe. Um, so that's a little look at that and we'll set it up and we'll do some tests with the winding simulator and you can see how the memory function works then 
Um, so we'll set it up as well and we'll do some tests with this little winding simulator on here. But the laser, uh, I'll do time tests on there so um, you won't, uh, I won't be using the uh, remote control probe. I'll we'll stick him to one side. Um, and then volts and I can do a normal time test if you like just by pressing and holding the button uh, and that's the reading I get shouldn't do that and when I've done if I want I can press the store that's been stored to memory 7 if I say if you want to do a bit more of a longer insulation test you can press the lock button in once hit the test button and now the instrument will be held on until you knock the test button off again I don't know whether it works yeah if you hit the test button it stops on the test I don't know if you um, it has the same effect with the lock button oh it does as well so either the lock button or the test button will stop it from doing its uh, test function if you hold it down you then get pi uh, test function, short press will take you to the DAR function and then you can hit the test button again and obviously it will start its time test for the 1 minute duration for DAR, 10 minutes for PI so those are in there and it will record the ratio at the end of the test um, knock him off, what you also have you have a compare menu on here um, and it's uh, 100 kilo ohms or you can scroll through 200, 500k, 1 meg, 2 meg, 5 meg, 10 meg, 20 meg, 50, 100, 200, and then back to 100k. So pre-selectable um, compares if you hit the go button. And then when you've, you get the little green pass light on there, if you've exceeded the compare. See what data it does save when you've used the compare function. Off. Let's recall. So it, so it doesn't move. Um, you get the microamps. You get the voltage. It doesn't remember any of the compare facility within the memory. So you'd have to record that manually if it was of interest to you. Okay. One thing I didn't test. You know, focus a little bit more is these insulation testers should have a safety cutout on them um, so that if they get or detect a live voltage they will cut out and then won't carry out the insulation test so we'll stick this on here and we'll put uh, 20 volts onto it <coughs> we're in the insulation test function and you can see we've picked up 19 volts on the display already and it probably does yeah it was actually carry out the test when you're doing that because 19 volts is okay for it if we start to oh that's good no hand in the way do we Wind the voltage up slowly. You see 24. And you can see now display's kicked over and it's showing greater than 30 volts with the red lights lit and it's a double beep now, it won't go into insulation test mode. <clears throat> um, so the cutoff point this is 30 volts, some meters are about 50 volts. Um, and what we will do if we just knock him off, you see now it will fire up. Um, if we'll put a bit more voltage on <clears throat> and we lock this. 
So it's now in test mode and if we apply a voltage onto it <coughs> you can see the instrument cuts out even though it was already in test mode so it's perfectly safe. Um, it was a fair bit of current, 16 milliamps. Uh, oh, it goes back to test. Oh, that's interesting. It goes back to insulation test mode when the voltage disappears. Mm, okay. Um, a lot of them you find will cut out and stay cut out. Um, so that's the, the main safety function of the insulation tester.